Yanni, please give your attention to Yanni. Hey guys, in case you didn't know, I'm Yanni from Secos, and today I'll be talking about NASA's funding. So I have the personal privilege of visiting Greece every summer with my family. I enjoy it for uh, obvious reasons, but something I enjoy, I enjoy while I'm over there is the night sky. There's practically no light pollution, and you can see the beautiful Milky Way galaxy. This is actually a picture I've taken. Wow. And um, something I like to look at through all my telescopes is the moon. Um, this is another picture I've taken. And I always think of NASA when I look at the moon. And I look up to NASA just like basketball players look up to Michael Jordan. And I also think of the Apollo missions when I look at the moon, that humans have actually been there before. Unfortunately, I'm also reminded that we haven't gone back, that we haven't tried going farther than the moon, that we stopped dreaming. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration was founded under, under President Eisenhower in 1958. It was founded due to the fact that America was losing the war. In the 1960s, we were at war, in the Cold War with Russia. Remember Sputnik, the first man-made satellite to be put into orbit? We often forget that it was strapped to, to an emptied out casing of an intercontinental ballistic missile. It was, a signal we, it was a signal we needed to get our act together. And then, in 62, President John F. Kennedy called for America to execute something thought impossible, to put a man on the moon and to bring him back to Earth. And then just seven years later, the country pulled together its ingenuity and landed two men onto the lunar surface. Apollo 11 became the height of humanity's technological achievements. However, at the same time, childhood heroes were created. You had every kid in America wanting to become an astronaut. <coughs> the entire nation became electrified by the NASA effect into dreaming of tomorrow and making it come. After Apollo 11, we could accomplish anything. And then, um, after Apollo 11, there was Apollo, well, before Apollo 11, there was Apollo 8. And this is just to show the cultural effect a space program has had on us. Apollo 8 was the first time we left Earth for another celestial destination. We went to the, to the moon and discovered Earth as a whole, without borders. Its effects were, were clearly seen immediately. 1970, the Comprehensive Clean Air Act was passed. Earth Day became a thing. The environment, Environmental Protection Agency was founded. And then in 71, Doctors Without Borders was created. Where do you think they got that from? Without borders. <laughs> and then in 72, DDT was banned. It's amazing the cultural effect the space program has had on us. And space enthusiasts throughout all this thought, oh, we went to the moon by 69, we'll be on Mars in another 10 years. They're completely wrong because you have to remember who's approving the NASA budget every year. The effect NASA had on dreaming of tomorrow was overlooked by the US Congress. For them, the space race had been won. Leading up to the Apollo missions, the NASA budget had been increasing with the public support of it. But after we stopped going to the moon, after we stopped reaching for new heights and dreaming of tomorrow, it all ended. I have the percentages um, wiped it out because I want to ask you, how much do you think we spend on NASA per year? Does anyone want to take a guess? The percent of the federal budget? Alex? 0.7%. Uh, 5%? 5%? Uh, raise your hand if you think it's over 5%. Okay, yeah. Um, the current NASA budget is in fact 0.48% of your tax dollar. <laughs> That's half a penny for your tax dollar. Just to illustrate this, here are $2. Could you tell that the top one is half a percent thinner in width? If we zoom in, you can see that half a percent of its width doesn't even get you into the ink. That little sliver right there, that buys the space station, the space shuttles, all the NASA centers, the rovers, the Hubble Space Telescope, and all the astronauts. <laughs> It's amazing what we've, been, what we've been able to do with that, half percent. But why is NASA subject to that small amount in the first place? Is it the public support? Well, actually, the public loves NASA and space in general. Public support is usually 80% positive towards spaceflight. Well, that's if budget costs aren't taken into consideration. But as we've seen, the cost isn't something to worry about. It's only half a penny on the tax dollar. The, the public usually assumes the NASA budget to be very high because of the publicity NASA gets. I mean. The space shuttles, the International Space Station. Have you seen the space selfies? It's thought that these cost enormous amounts, just more taxes for the people. But as we've seen, it's only half a penny on the tax dollar. It's also worth mentioning that space is very popul popular in pop culture. I'm sure you've seen um, the Gravity, Interstellar, The Martian. I bet you've seen Star Wars. <laughs> That's managed to remain popular uh, till today, apparently. So obviously, the public loves space and NASA. So why is the budget still so low? 
unfortunately, we need to have a worry about politics. NASA can only request a budget for an upcoming proposal. It's Congress who has the final say. And it seems that again and again, scientifically illiterate people are elected and re-elected. These kind of politicians are playing for the quarterly reports and next election cycle. A good example is our friend, Senator, Senator Ted Cruz, who is the chairman in the, in the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Space, Science, and Competitiveness. He openly dismisses climate change and in unrelated news has received more than a million dollars in campaign donations from the oil and gas industry. Very ironic that someone who denies science is in, is in charge of making federal decisions for it. I'm not here to write about my political views, but what's obvious is that we need to represent ourselves with people who do support the expansion of science, engineering, and innovation. But what if the underlying problem is actually just a misunderstanding of what NASA is and what it stands for? I mean, think about it. Where do you think your $54 per year goes to for NASA? Pretty space pictures? An often criticism of space exploration is why should we go to space when we have problems down here? Well, actually, solving problems in space helps technology down here on Earth. If we, if we didn't have NASA, we wouldn't have the red LED light. It was invented to grow plants in space, and now it's used for medical purposes. If we didn't have NASA, we wouldn't have this, as good solar panels. If we didn't have NASA, we wouldn't have the smoke detector, water filter, home insulation, artificial limbs, the joystick, fire footer gear, workout machines, the fastest speedo swimsuit, and telecommunications. Have you heard of any of those? This is called NASA's spin-off technology, where NASA invents something and gives it to the public industries. And it's because of this that it's estimated for every dollar put into NASA, seven dollars indirectly goes back into the economy. And this is definitely enough to warrant at least 1% of the federal budget. Also, um, you can think of NASA in two ways, near-Earth near asteroids and climate change. So first, remember that, um, that comet, in, or that meteor in Russia a couple years ago, it was just 56 feet in diameter. And it damaged thousands of buildings and wounded more than 1,500 people. And it was undetected before it even entered the atmosphere. NASA is working on trying to look out for these dangerous near-Earth asteroids that could do serious damage. But but, you know, but um, this thing could happen at any time. I mean, just this past Halloween, there was another near-Earth asteroid that was just out past the orbit of the moon. It was 1,300 feet in diameter. What would have happened if it had impacted the Earth? NASA is trying to NASA is trying to um, look out for these near Earth asteroids, but at its current levels of funding, it's struggling to meet goals and um, prepare for this type of catastrophe. There's actually more people watching this TED Talk right now than people working on preparation for this. And then there's climate change, just as important as a meteor impact or actual. Um, these are actually all of the um, near Earth asteroids that are known. If that doesn't scare you, that these are only, only all the known ones, I don't really know what will. So um, then there's also, oh yeah, this, that's pretty cool. Um, so also climate change, which is just as important as a meteor impact. It, if it wasn't for, for NASA's Earth Science Division, we wouldn't even be able to confirm climate change. We owe a lot to NASA's Earth, Earth Science Division, which a lot of people don't even know exists. The purpose of it is to develop a scientific understanding of Earth systems and its responses to human or natural induced changes. Um, without the, without, yeah, um, there's actually going to be a $50 million uh, budget cut to NASA's Earth Science Division in the 2016 fiscal um, budget. And this cut has been going on the, the past couple of years. With less money in the NASA's Earth Science Division, we'll be less able to act on climate change and less uh, aware of it. And um, also, um, they collect their data mostly through satellites. But um, do we even have the money for NASA? I mean, if it's so if it's so necessary, do we even have the money? I hear there's like a big debt crisis going on. But um, actually, yes, we do have money. The federal budget in 2014 was three and a half trillion dollars. It would take you 31,000 years to count to just one trillion, and that's one digit per every waking second of those years. And NASA gets just 17 and a half billion. I know, just 17 billion dollars. But the military that year got $620 billion. That's 18% of the federal budget. Also, the $850 billion bank bailout exceeded the entire 50-plus running year budget of NASA. And then, in 2011, the, um, there was $20.2 billion spent on air conditioning in Iraq and Afghanistan, while the NASA budget of that year was, was $18.5 billion. I'm not saying we shouldn't be protecting our um, banks and 
we, sh we shouldn't be spending money on national security and protecting our soldiers. But what's clear is that we're spending less money on dreaming of tomorrow, the science tomorrow, of tomorrow, and the technology of tomorrow than air conditioning. I'm not here to propose exactly how we need to spend our federal money. But what's obvious is that there are, there are some ironies in some places. So what would happen if we do increase the NASA budget to a mere 1% of the federal budget? What could we do? First off, um, each mission would receive adequate funding. What I mean by this is that with its current funding, NASA is sometimes forced to allocate internal funds and prioritize some projects over others. Example is the Cassini probe, which is currently in orbit around Saturn. It arrived there in 2004, and it was expected to end operations in 2008. It's actually still working. So NASA wants to keep using it, obviously, but it was forced to um, allocate internal funds toward it. This leads to delays and more criticisms of NASA not being able to reach goals. What else could we do? Well, we could be on Mars in 10 to 15 years, our next giant leap for mankind. We could discover life waiting to be discovered here, here in our own solar system. Some worlds that NASA wants to explore is Mars, Jupiter's moon Europa, and Saturn's Titan, just to name a few. So, um, So it's really amazing the, the effect NASA has had on us, the dream of tomorrow. Um, if we increase funding for NASA, the most important thing is, is actually, we don't know what could come from it. I mean, imagine the spin-off technology that could come from it. The next generation will be inspired and ask, don't you want to be the next astronaut on Mars? Just like some of our grandparents were asked and inspired, like the Apollo astronauts. So, in, in uh, 1936, a New York Times editorial said, a rocket will never be able to leave the Earth's atmosphere. A space program originally meant to one-up the Soviets has brought us a long way. We were the first to go to the moon and remain the only, but we shouldn't stop there. The, America's investment in the space agency in the 1950s and 60s ushered in a period of economic and technological advancement beyond anything the world had ever seen. It's, but still, the most powerful agency on the dreams of our nation is currently underfunded to do what it needs to be doing, making dreams come true. And um, let's face it, our future, the next frontier in our economic future is in space. So what are we waiting for? Increase the NASA budget to a penny, a full percent, that we can change the world. How much would you pay for the universe? Thank you. <laughs> Stuff a lot there, but uh, questions? No, I think just Um, as a government uh, agency, I don't think they would allow that. But actually, I was thinking of instead of this last slide, making like a kickstart NASA as a joke. Um, any other questions? Thank you very much.